we have uh, our fourth speaker for this session, and he is one of Indonesia's most promising military officers, and he recently graduated from Harvard, and I believe that his father is also quite famous. <laughs> Captain Agus Harimutu, Harimuti Jan Juliono. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <clears throat> it is a great honor for me to be here to share some thoughts on Indonesia's geopolitical future. As a military officer, I have no doubt that we live in a different world. The most important military mission was against pirates halfway across the, the world in Somalia, and our largest military operations other than war since World War II was during the tsunami tragedy in Aceh in 2004 and 5. Our enemies that could harm our people have strange names like Y2K, SARS, HIV, monetary crisis, and Dr. Azahari, the terrorist ones. And the 21st century mission of the TNI was not just to defend our sovereignty, but also to protect democracy and reform. Like the rest of Indonesian nation, by necessity, the Indonesian military has to adapt to keep up with history. And I predict that a major challenge for the TNI in the years ahead will be to respond to new emerging threats and to build new capabilities and to develop new partnerships as well as to keep up with the revolutions in military affairs. Let me begin by saying that Indonesia's geopolitical position in the 21st century has significantly improved. Let me explain why. As a result of Wawasa Nusantara, our territorial structure is no longer um, broken up into thousand separate pieces, but has been turned into a single coherent territorial unit. Our sovereign territory has doubled up since we declared independence due to reform of maritime, maritime law. And all this took place through legal and diplomatic means without a single bullet being fired. Politically, Indonesia is much more coherent today. Centrifugal factors are stronger than centripetal ones. And there is peace in Aceh now, and compared to the 1960s, the uh, separatist rebellions are no longer a major threat. Democracy and decentralization have made the provinces stronger and have made Indonesia more durable. We have been all able to resolve many of boundary dispute issues, but boundary disputes in Ambalat remain. There are no foreign military bases in Indonesia, and we must continue to maintain this condition. And the Indonesian military today is more professional with enhanced capabilities and has uh, established increasing military-to-military -military ties with our surrounding countries, our neighbors. Yet some geopolitical concerns remain. To our north, right on our doorstep, the South China Sea remains a flashpoint contested by six claimants. Oil has not been found in that disputed area. However, if, if it is found, then things will get much more complicated, and the strategic stakes will rise. We are certain to face geostrategic condensation in our region and within our territory due to the growing military capability of countries in our region. We need to ensure that this condensation will not lead to new strategic or geostrategic clash and tensions. 
Indonesia is becoming more connected, more integrated, and more exposed to the global environment. And this also adds to our vulnerability. But it does not mean that we need to retreat from globalized world. But it does mean that we have to be more or smart across the board in uh, promoting policy or policies to enhance resilience, maximize uh, uh, opportunities, and minimize risks. Overall, I see the region is uh, projecting more promise than peril. And for the first time, Southeast Asia is, not, is no longer a major uh, war, war zone as it was a few decades ago. And despite the development gap, Southeast Asia is now known as, uh, in international system as a region of peace, cooperation, growth, opportunity, and stability. It is said that one of the most important geopolitical developments at the end of the uh, 20th century was the China's transformation. And I agree. But it is also true that a critical game-changing ge geopolitical development in Asia has been the Southeast Asia transformation into a single regional unit, the ASEAN 10 and the ASEAN community. This also means that for the first time, the regional countries, rather than the major powers, are now in the driving seat of affairs in Southeast Asia. And this is an indispensable strategic asset that ASEAN should not or should preserve and even enhance. For Indonesia, the most important geopolitical development, apart from the emergence of ASEAN community, is the evolution of our strategic partnership with the uh, major powers. The US, China, Japan, Russia, and Europe. These are all transformations, transformational relationships because not too long ago, Indonesia has some kind of uh, adversarial relations with these major powers. I predict that Indonesia's geostrategic well-being will be defined by our ability to evolve a constructive relations with these major powers. This means a continuous effort to give flash to the concept of dynamic equilibrium. In the 21st century, Indonesia sees itself as a regional power, but also increasingly as a global player. This is inevitable given our status as a large democracy, emerging economy, and also a resources-rich, uh, strategically located middle power. I also predict that despite our global engagement, ASEAN will continue to be the cornerstone of our foreign policy. And indeed, our ASEAN role will reinforce our global posture. I also predict that we will see an increasingly of geopolitics of cooperations in Asia, driven by increasing convergence of interest between states uh, on, on new emerging issues like uh, you can see in the screen, including energy security, food security, and, and also climate change, terrorism, and natural disaster. In the 21st century, national security is determined not by how many enemies we have, but on how many friends and partners we make. Small countries usually know this very well, but middle powers should also learn from this lesson. So I predict the growing, there, there will be a growing importance of military to military cooperations and de defense diplomacy in uh, Indonesia's strategic outlook. In the 20th century, the most geopolitical force was nationalism, like what has been said by uh, uh, Ambassador Dino. And it changed the world's political map. For sure, it changed Indonesia. And uh, in the 21st century, nationalism will, will still be an important force in the uh, international system. However, there will be many more geopolitical forces 
coming to life. And to me, there are uh, two particularly important for Indonesia. One is technology. Technology will be the key driver uh, of change in the uh, 21st century. And technology will accelerate the change in uh, disease uh, speed. It is estimated that the uh, technological progress in the 21st century will be equal to 20,000 years of normal human progress. It is said that the 20th century is the century of big ideas. And I think in the 21st century, what will change the world are small gadgets like Blackberries, iPads, iPhones, and this device, the tablets, and also Googles, Facebook, Twitters. These are the things that will change our societies, the individuals and the nations. They will transform relationships, transcend borders, and uh, connect peoples, change movements, and also multiply progress. And hopefully, it will also change or strengthen peace in the world. Second is regionalism. In Europe, we witness how regionalism has gained ground and also changed the region forever. And even until today, as the European Union continues to expand. The good news is that in many other parts of the world, including in Asia Pacific, in Southeast Asia, that regionalism is also growing. While um, I, and I, I predict that these regionalisms will continue to grow with different speed and character. If we can make sure that these regionalisms in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, North America, Latin America, or in Asia, that all these regional, regionalisms are open, benevolent, and interconnected, then the world order will be, more, uh, will be stronger and more peaceful. While ASEAN continue to be our cornerstone, I predict that the Indian Ocean will become an increasingly important geopolitical arena for Indonesia in the 21st century. This is because the Indian, the Indian Ocean is going to grow in terms of demography, trades, and strategic importance. And yet, it is also a region that is lacking in terms of a diplomatic uh, framework. It is important for us to prevent the Indian Ocean to become a region or a theater of rivalry, strategic rivalry. I predict that there will be more, much more efforts to establish architectures in the Indian Ocean. And I predict that Straits of Malacca and also Sunda uh, Strait will only be or will only rise in terms of uh, geostrategic significance. And uh, to conclude, I predict that in the 21st century, geopolitics, geostrategy, and geoeconomics will increasingly be intertwined. And despite the great challenges that lie ahead, there are far greater opportunities for a community of nations to harness them and to make or to create a better world and peaceful world. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Captain Agus Yuriono, who is also a member of the UN Peacekeeping uh, Force in uh, Lebanon. And it's interesting to hear his uh, ideas about how the military is uh, transforming itself further into the future.